Hi. <laughs> What's going on, Jennifer Lacey? Good morning. How are you? I am magical splendiferous. That's how I am. That is awesome. <laughs> That's a good way to start the morning. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so glad you made it back to Dallas. Safe yes. and sound. Yes. Uh, you it's a late night, but that's okay. How was your travels this week? It was good. It was, I got to go up to one of our projects in North Carolina and got to sit in a room and talk with um, um, our client and our project team about um, alignment and culture and being human and all the fun stuff. Human? Why are we talking about human? We ain't got time for human stuff. <laughs> Exactly. That's why we're talking about what we're talking about today. Yeah. So today, this is going to be a good one. So the name of the of, of the session is like Moths to a Flame. And shout out to Mondo 2.0. There was a type. Can you believe it, Jen? I had like a typo and some misspelling in, in the post. I, I know, super rare. Um, but the, the conversation or the subject came up as a result of a post that you had made. Yes. About going to the dentist. And and then we kept talking about it. It's like, okay, yeah. So what in the damn world does a moth, like a moth to the flame, what does that even mean, Jen? Well, well, I'm not going to take this. You, this was your analogy. So we were talking and, and I was talking about conditioned behavior and talking about things that, you know, just in our industry. And we talk about a lot of things that specifically have to do with our industry. And as we were talking about deprioritizing things and how we make choices, you were like, oh, it's like this. So I'm not taking that. You get to explain the, that. Uh, you lost me. So you're you're going to tell you're when we talk about moth to a flame, that was you, you, you visualize that. Yes. And so what, why, how did, how does deprioritizing and conditioned behavior, how does that relate to being a moth to a flame? Uh, yeah, I'm tracking now, but it's because I'm getting distracted with all the people. No, stop, just stop. Focus, focus, focus. That's what Adam's there. Good morning, Adam. <laughs> Adam says, good morning, you wonderful people. Yes. And he he also said, Jen, be nice. It's too early. To <laughs> That's why he's there. Let him do his job. Focus, to focus. Be assaulting people. Uh, Jim Gontorius. So Jim knows, right? Because Jim is connected to this conversation around deprioritizing conditioned behavior. Um, he says, good morning. Need to get these earbuds working <laughs> so he could stay out of trouble. He did. He said, I'm listening by myself today. I'm not going to have company. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. And so I guess heads up, folks, if you are a moth as well, um, you may not want, you want to minimize the amount of accountability bill of buddies that are going to have access to this <laughs> content because they may use it against you. Uh, Amy, what's going on, Good girl? Morning. Good morning, y'all. Uh, she also gave us a tip, um, the Grammarly program. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sounds fun. We'll see how that I think he's, he was like limes, you know, Hawaii. I'm sure there was something that caused that. I, who you know i'm i just like okay dump and then then it's like oh man so like my grammarly is my people you point it out because i will never see it and that extra step to go to grammarly i have i don't value it yeah like, it doesn't bug me that it's misspelled um so thank you all for helping and amy thank you for your advice mr bruce grimo coming in from the yes. nyc what's up brother good morning good man we gotta go bump. we got a blue heart oh yeah go 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 yeah, yeah, headed there. Holly Totten says, good morning from good morning, Texas. Holly. Holly, how are you? I get to spend Monday mornings with Holly on Clubhouse. Nice. And so if y'all are interested on hearing any, like hearing me blab my mouth some more, um, hearing Holly share her expertise on being a writer's coach. And then our uh, another friend of ours, Miss Izzy, talks about, I'm sorry, not Miss Izzy, um, Geez, I just forgot her name. Anyhow, she talks about uh, ageism, Ooh. or she's an age agitator. So it's good conversation. Mondays at 7 a.m., so come check us out. Uh, and then we got a blue heart, so okay. we know what yes. that means, right? Yes, Dad? means that no, a blue heart means it's your first time listening to us live. So excited to have you here. And so the tribe that are out there listening, that get to listen to us every two weeks, give some love to Tim, like him, go connect with him, connect with his content. Tim, be ready. 
because we got a tribe that really likes to surround the people that are here. So thank you one for the blue heart. Thank you for being here and uh, be ready because there's going to be a lot of conversation today. Yes, absolutely. And folks, I just want to like, know because I follow Tim or I'm connected with Tim on the LinkedIn and he posts some really great stuff. Like he's a lean freak like us. He's a lean maniac superintendent. And what I particularly love about his posts, they're like reflections of what he did that day. Oh, like right? real it's time. Pontification like around the definition. It's what the hell he did that day and what his takeaways were. So really meaningful stuff. Nice. Um, so thank you, Tim, coming Welcome. in from San Diego. So it's early for Tim right now. <laughs> yes, Ooh. thank you. <laughs> yeah. And then we got Miss Carol, who always brings the fire. She says, rock on, no BSers. She's been posting some stuff and tagging us and, and stuff like that. So She yes. don't play. She she don't play. <laughs> Miss, Miss Carol, love you. And she's ultra supportive about our stuff. Like, she'll share with her network and stuff. So thank you. And for she's that, been, Carol. like, doing a lot with, um, you know, those next generation of builders and those next generation of welders and all yes. that. So she's been super supportive of those people as well. Yes, yes, yes. Oh man, we got a whole bunch of people. Okay. So come, I'm going to come back to yes. folks. Please keep sharing your love. Let us know where you're at. Um, the main reason, like one, we like to, you know, I like to deflect and I'll use all of your comments to yes. get my on hot water. Uh, but two, like we don't know if you're there if you don't make a comment. So yes. it's not a requirement. If you're more comfortable, I listen to um, the Bring Me Your Construction Content podcast uh, and the McMahons, jo Josh and, and his wife were on there talking about the value of LinkedIn. And she was like, you know, I'm kind of a lurker. I, I have my account and I go and I read and, and every now and then I like and maybe I'll comment. And that's okay. So like, if you're a lurker, that's not a bad thing. Uh, but we would love to know that you're here. And the only way we know that is if you post or catch us like later in Las Vegas mm -hmm. or in Dallas, where we're doing a presentation at multiple conferences next month. Uh, so see that. Anyhow, so Moth to the Flame. Well, and deprioritate prioritization and conditioning. Right. So you post you made a post about you had a dentist appointment and you got a call from work for to do work stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is a typical thing, right? We we are all faced with that, especially the no BS Trime members, because everybody's baller. We've got influence. We've got responsibility within yes. our companies. And the natural, your post talked about how you wanted to reschedule the dentist appointment because the, you know, the work, the responsibility, mm -hmm. but, but you did like a really big thing and didn't reschedule. You held the dentist and said, I'm busy. Can we have the thing on another day? And that post blew up. It did. Right. Which when I say it, when I summarize it that way, it sounds like not a big deal, but it's an enormous deal. How, so, for, so like, let's, let's warm it up, Jen. Right. What did it feel like for you when you like, before you responded and said, no, I have a dentist appointment. Mm -hmm. They're like negotiating, calculating, going on. Tell us about that, please. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's a it's a call or it's a meeting that's on, that's on my calendar, and I'm not always an active participant. So sometimes I'm just in the meeting, taking and taking, uh, listening, paying attention. You know, maybe some follow up stuff. So it's not a meeting that I always am contributing. And for this specific meeting, I had like a part on the agenda. And so it was like, er, like, what do I do? So then, it, so I just had to, like, I had to go, okay, do I ask them or do I tell them, hey, I have, I have a prior engagement. Uh, we're going to have to push this. Or do I go, okay, this is my commitment. So let me just try to figure out how I'm going to get to the dentist later. And I just made a decision that it's going to be okay. And that they talk about a lot of things on that call and that I just, and, and I just, I mean, I kind of had to make that decision. And so that was the, the meeting itself. Sent the email. No problem, Jennifer. You can talk next week. Like it was just not even in all the the anxiety that I had prior to sending the email, the response, I was just like, Jennifer, come on now. Like it just it got me going. This is a lot of it's in my head. And that's where the conditioning part came from. And I had another another uh, conversation with um a superintendent of ours that comes up and says, Hey, I saw your post. And, and like, I want to talk to you about this because it, it goes, it's like two-sided. 
One of it is, is the expectation that, hey, because it's a client driven event or because it's a, you know, it's, it's something important that we, uh, they expect us to be there. He goes, but the other side is like, that's us convincing ourselves that we have to be there. And he said, so I'd love to follow up on this conversation with you because he said, it's, it's not just one person's fault that we're making those choices and making ourselves not a priority. And, um, and I mean, literally, that's that's kind of the gist of what made me think, you know what, this is probably something we need to, because, you know, you and I like to talk about things that no one else likes to talk about. So I'm like, let's just put this out there and talk about how we've got to be able to make choices. And it and I even in the post added, because we had this conversation with our LCI DFW COP Lean Coffee about meetings and yep. about like meetings. We know like death by meeting, like there's so many things that we are required to be in. And it came up in that in our discussion is, do you up front tell people the purpose of the meeting, the value of the meeting, the value of that person in the meeting? What 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 is their purpose in the meeting? Is there value for them? Are they going to participate? Are they going to contribute? Are they going to add, you know, add, add something, you know, that maybe some people in the room don't know? We don't communicate those things. We don't tell people, this is why we need you here. Because sometimes they're not really needed in the meeting, but we just get so in this cadence of, oh, bring this person, bring this person. And they're just there. Yes. So. I have a story, a okay. really personal story about yes. that. But before we go there, I'm going to go to the comments because we've got yes. another blue yes. heart. We got Mr. Greg. Welcome, Greg. Straight out of Crompton, baby. He's got a podcast. And yes. I, I think we have, like, we're waiting on you, Jen. Uh, probably. So that we can hang okay. out with Mr. Okay. Crompton and have a conversation. Right, right, Adam? <laughs> Yeah, Adam, go. <laughs> okay, I, I'm on it. So Greg Crumpton is an advocate and supporter of the skill trade, or at least that's the facet of him that I know most about, mm-hmm. folks. So y'all need to hit him up, check out his podcast. Um, and we're gonna keep showing some love. Miss yes. Amy, look, you already stirred it up, Jen. Amy says, We do this all the time. I have literally been sitting in the dentist chair having work done and during the breaks responding to work things where I've been on the staff call while at the dentist, right? Like, girl, yes. we, I, again, I think we're <laughs> all, we all have the same affliction and, and we just, we're going to talk about it. We're going to yes. dive into it after we show some more love. Mr. Yes. James Gable <laughs> coming in from Colorado, baby. Where else we got? We got Mr. Bradley coming Good in. Good morning, from Bradley. Vegas. What's up, Bradley? Man, I, I, I'm looking forward to the after party with Bradley because he always brings some some serious, some serious business. Yes. Um, and then we got LinkedIn user who is actually, uh, darn it, I, I lost his name. Hang on a second. Mr. Albert Octavianus coming in. Welcome, welcome. What's going on? And also, he's also a lean maniac, posts great stuff. So folks who want to connect with him. Um, Mr. Justin. Oh, he's been throwing some stuff out this week, just like getting my brain moving. Oh, uh-huh, <laughs> the like this the thing about control and imp- like the things that impact yes. production. That was a good one. He's all, I heard, and this may not be um, a good thing, but I heard that he has, he is actually convicted of being an emotional bungee jumper. Is that true? That's another, okay. We'll talk about that later. Yes. yes, yes. Oh, that's, oh, oh. that's exciting. Uh, so Justin, what's up my brother. And then we have good evening here from LinkedIn user. Um, not sure who that is, but I'm sure we will figure it out. Okay. Um, Nate Price, what's up, Mr. Nate? Coming Good in, in from Cleveland. Nate, and I talked this week. Yay! Welcome, Say, Nate. Say Y'all love on Nate and connect with him. Yes. So you, so you're Nate. Are you? If you're connected with Jen, I am. I'm and sorry. Nate and I talk a lot, and he's a lean maniac, and he is trying to change things. And he and I talk uh, very frequently, and uh, and so I was telling him about our live stream. So. Oh, welcome, my friend. Happy to have you here. Of course, we got Miss Maria. She sent me a text, a picture of some delicious, like, evil chocolate cake. I'm like, oh, that's just not nice. Also, she's part of the, the that troublemaking group of the emotional bungee. Emotional bungee jumping, yep. Uh-huh. Um, Mr. K Keys. Hi. You know what, Kate? I was just thinking about Kate the other day. I'm like, man, I, I haven't... Last time I seen him was in New Orleans and hadn't hadn't met, you know, connected with them yeah. at all. Kate, thank you for taking the step to connect and and reminding me of how much of a slacker I am because I failed yes. to do so. 
Um, this to Jeff Solberg. I met him via a, a group of, of men that are talking, brainstorming, masterminding stuff. Amazing man. Welcome, awesome. Jeff. Welcome, Jeff. And then we got Gary Green. What's up, Gary? <laughs> Welcome to the party. Yes. All right. So, so Jen. No, 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 no. Stop, 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 stop. You have deflected. You still are not, you still have not talked about the moth to the flame. And, and that visual and like what, 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 when we, when you talk about moth to the flame and we, when we were talking about deprioritizing and conditioned behavior, you said it's kind of like a moth to a flame. So can you just talk Ooh. through like how they connect? Yeah. So, you know, you've seen moths flying around in circles around the light or whatever you go camping. It's around, they, they're just zooming and zooming and they're mesmerizing, hypnotized. And then yeah, they hit the light and poof, they, they get smoked, right? And so it's that. It, like, and there's some science behind it. If it's the moon or whatever. But the point is the attraction of the light is so intense that they can't differentiate between what is like healthy and real and unhealthy and dangerous. So much so that they continue to circle the light until they die. So that's the moth. Now, as it relates to us and the, the, you know, Amy shared a good example around being at the dentist chair. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a, like, that's a step up because she was actually in the dentist chair. But for us professionals, think about your job as the light. <laughs> You're the moth and the responsibilities, last minute calls, situations at work, pull us the gravity of that pulls us tighter and tighter and tighter so much so that we deprioritize the important things right doctor's appointment dentist appointment family commitments mm -hmm. time off vacations like learning expanding our knowledge networking connecting outside of our own company to to keep ourselves alive mm -hmm. like we deprioritize all of that which in effect, leads to poor health. Mm -hmm. And it keeps declining and declining until yeah, we hit the light and poof, no more moths. How'd I do, Jen? Do I get that was amazing. No, and that and I I want to hit because you and I hit on this point that we're not always saying that because you're focused and excited and so into your work, that's a bad thing. Because you and I know we're very passionate about our work and the things we do. We just know because of that it can get us in a trance and we're not realizing what we're deprioritizing to be able to show up. So it's like that, that, that was a big part of our conversation. <laughs> yeah. I'm deflecting again. <laughs> I know who you are. I'm going to give you a little slack. Uh, and so we got, look, look, we got good morning from your favorite San Antonio LinkedIn user. Is that Kirby? No, that is not Ugh. Kirby. It is Tanya. Okay, Tanya. Welcome, yeah. Tanya. Tanya, who who instigated me to have the very, very, very first no BS meetup. <sighs> Whatever. I think yeah. we've had a couple since then in Dallas, so that's okay. Yeah, but were they first? I don't think so. <laughs> so what's going on, Tanya? Glad to, to be here. She's also the person that instigated the idea behind the... Um, audiobook oh yes the lean and love audiobook which i hear what? There's, oh, oh there's a there's a blooper reel about to come out you have control over all the audio clips that is just not i don't that's not fair <laughs> it's it is so awesome i just love it um thomas. okay where do we go from here jen good morning thomas Thomas. Well, I mean, we've got some people over here sharing some some big things. So maybe again, I I think I want to also people you we're talking about meeting things. We're talking about de to deprioritizing things, and um, people are already already adding to the conversation. All right, folks. You know how Jen was just commenting about my editing, and I have the control. This is how Jen deflect and. <laughs> exercises her control she doesn't want to share her stuff so well, and i don't have control you and adam have all the control so i have to like okay bring them in bring them in come on 
So here we go. Mr. James Gable says, love to talk around having meetings of value. State the value you hope to gain. And does everyone in the room need to be there? Yes. Yeah. So I've had, like, this is a serious thing. You know, you know how many times I've worked with teams and in the meeting, they're saying, what's, what's our biggest time suck? What's our biggest problem? Meetings. All right. But, and then like the natural default after that meeting is like, Hey, we should schedule a follow-up meeting. Like, um, yes. And, and so meetings are a hard thing. Like mm -hmm. I shouldn't say hard. They're cop. It's a complicated situation. And I said at the top of the call that I had like a, a personal example around how I deal with this. And so the, couple of jobs ago, I was getting invited to these meetings and, and I'm super, super impatient and I don't really know how to behave. So for me to sit in a meeting and like not jump around and scream and dance takes enormous amounts of energy from me. Um, and when it's like boring and I can't understand what I'm supposed to be there for, like, let's not even talk about a jacked up, poorly designed meeting it's just we'll stay neutral on that it takes a lot for me to be there and not disrupt and not take over right um and so i'm in this meeting it's like the second or third time and i'm like what in the hell am i here for and that was really so that's like the main question that that my filtering process around meetings is two things what value am i providing and what value am I getting? Like, if I'm not contributing value to the convert to the meeting mm -hmm. or receiving value, I do not need to be there. And that's kind of selfish and, and hard, but it's what it is. And so, you know, the easy button is stop going to the meeting. But that's not a good, that's not a respectful behavior, right? You got to have courageous, got to have some vulnerability and have the conversation and that's exactly what I did. So I'm like, man, I'm I'm in this meeting and I'm like, it wasn't a bad meeting, but I what am I there for? Yes. Right. Like the, the highlighters on the desk are contributing as much as I am. <laughs> like that's I'm just there. Oh, the Carol says ADHD would be a wonderful. I agree. I agree. I don't know if y'all know, but like my middle name is D. All right. So that's like, do, 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 do. I got all that disorder stuff going on. Um, and so, so what I had to do is have a conversation with the meeting organizer. And, and, you know, I pumped the brakes. I let myself cool off because I wasn't going to go and say, Hey, I'm not getting any value out of this meeting. Why don't I'm not coming anymore? Cause I could have said that. And that's what I wanted to say. But I asked him, I said, Hey, you have me on this meeting. It's a recurring meeting. It's like 90 minutes every other week. Da, 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 da. And like, I'm not understanding what I'm there for. My experience, like I'm sitting there, there's a lot of good information, but I'm not like, there's nothing that for me to speak on or speak to. I'm not asking to be on the agenda, but I'm not understanding what the purpose of me being in this meeting is. And so we had that conversation, right? And the response was, well, well, they're like, well, I'm glad you asked because the thing is you have a regional role and you support the regional unit, like all the business units in the region. And sometimes things come up that you would have insight on and you being in the room would help us learn about that. Or sometimes there's stuff that we discuss that you could help us communicate out to the group. And then I was like, oh, and I said, okay, I think that's, you know, that's a fair thought. So how many other people are in the meeting for that same reason, for just in case, right? And they're like, well, there's about three other people. I'm like, okay, how often have those just in case things come up in the last four meetings? Well, I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, if some, we have somebody taking notes and action items, I, my request is, can I not be in the meeting and get the action items, send me an email of the action items, and then I can decipher and do whatever we need to do. Because the meeting was necessary, mm -hmm. but it was not necessary. I was not necessary to the meeting. What do you think about that? Well, I, yes. And I have an example, which like is, is I just heard this example this week. So we 
uh, try to not only have our daily huddles and our weekly work plans with our trades in the field, we also try to do the OAC daily, daily, uh, you know, daily huddle and weekly work plan for like bigger, bigger items that impact decisions. And I had um, a project manager like tell me like Jennifer, I'm really trying to like do this, and I know it's 15 minutes, and we were talking about it. He goes, but we have some people in there that like take off, take it off down these these right, you know, these rabbit holes. And he goes, and obviously they're in there, and I have them there, so that's huge. But I also can see the other people in the room going, oh my gosh, whatever. And so we and so we started talking about the parking lot. And he's like, what's the parking lot? I said, it's it's magical because again, those are the people you have the right people there. And you've realized the importance of the meeting and the importance of sticking with the time, but it's also your client. It's also someone that you, you're not just going to go stop talking. And I said, so like the parking lot is when you see something start going off track and it's not the purpose of the meeting, say, Hey, I'm going to, and just start writing. I'm adding this to the parking lot because it's super important. And then afterwards, if this is something specific that you and I need to talk about, we can, but it, then it, it shows the value to the people in the room that, hey, I value your time and this is the purpose of the meeting, but we, let's make sure we hit that later. And it also helps almost communicate back to that person that kind of goes off that, hey, let's make sure we're really clear on the value. And it was like, it was a cool conversation because he's like, oh, I didn't think about that. So you're still validating. Yep. I hear you. And this is important. Let's put it over here. And then we can talk about that later. And so, and, and anyway. Yeah. No, I think the point is like, it's not, it's not a, it's an awesome tool and it's not complicated yes. when the conversation is anything that is not on the agenda. Mm -hmm. You can make it this easy. Yes. If that's not on the agenda, put it on the parking lot yes. and, and let's keep on trucking. And so like our conversation today, Jen, is not about meetings, right? Because mm -hmm. I know that we could like all the way slide yeah, in. That's, a, that's probably another live stream. But at some the point. idea behind um, what I, the reason I brought up this meeting example is because that hour and a half is something that time I could be going to the doctor. Mm -hmm. I could be fixing myself a healthy, nutritious meal instead of the double meat, double cheese, water burger that I'm going to get because yeah. my time is compressed. And then Brad says, Mr. Bradley says, serve the project, not the mere presence, build the damn thing. Right? So what is the purpose of the meeting? How do we get like, is it, are, are all the efforts in alignment with doing, serving the purpose, serving the intended outcome, which if you're building, it's the building. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're coordinating stuff with the project team or with your own team internally, what's the purpose of the meeting? Is it in alignment with the overarching goal or target? Yes or no. If not, maybe, maybe it doesn't need to have a meeting. So folks, while Jen and I keep having this awesome conversation, I want to want y'all to think about what important things have you deprioritized because of work? Like, I'm sure we de deprior like I deprioritize stuff so I can get my beauty sleep, right? Because I gotta I gotta stay firme for for the no BS tribe. Um, but I'm talking about specifically for work, your workout, <coughs> your your the relationship that you have with your job. What things important things? Have you deprioritized for that? Leave that in the comments and we'll come back to it. Um, Greg Crumpton has a huge thought here. Yes. He says, I believe is having experimental, experimented with this over the last 30 months, being remote away from the, from HQ has given me the ability to only participate in the meetings that are of true value. Perhaps you could take on the mindset of being remote though you may not be, and then choose what and when to participate based upon the, if I had to travel to get there, would I? Just the thing that worked for me. So Jen, you're, you're on the, thank you, Mr. Crumpton. You are on the remote world. Yes. Uh, how does that align with your practices? A hundred percent. I agree. And I, and as, as crazy as COVID was for a lot of people, and it, you know, and it got them having to rethink things. It was, uh, it was the, exactly what needed to happen for me because prior to COVID, because of my role, um, th th there were a lot of asks and a lot of things that I needed to touch. And, and in my mind, because I am the person, I needed to say yes to everything. 
because I, you know, you want to make sure you're still adding value. You want to make sure that you don't leave people needing something that you don't feel like that was my mindset. And when COVID hit and I had to kind of restructure and, and how does, what does my support look like? What does my engagement look like? What does my communication look like? And I had to kind of relook at that because I couldn't get on a plane. It completely changed the way that I was able to show up. And two, all of a sudden the needs were not as great or, Hey, this can be virtual. Hey, this can be. And so for me having, you know, I have to get on a plane and travel and we have a lot of projects like it now those conversations are not me waiting for them to go, oh, it's okay. I now have a list of questions that I get to, when someone has a need or an ask, I get to go through my questions to find out where the priority is and what does it look like? And is it something I physically need to be there this week? I went up to North Carolina, physically needed to be there because they said, hey, we've not done this in person. The, the client's going to be there. It's it's important. So, but those are part of my questions versus, hey, you've done this with us two or three times. I think virtually we can just get our team together and they're they're comfortable and they, they know the cadence and stuff like that. Those are things I would never have asked before. But because of that, because of being in that, so remote, I completely agree. Not that that's the answer for everyone because we, we can't do that if you're on, on site and you're building. But like there are times where, We need everyone on site. We need everyone here. We need everyone in the room. And it's important for some, for some roles and some, but but sometimes it's not. And I don't think we think about that. We just make it important for everybody. Yes. And how does that contribute to us deprioritizing the important things? Um, So here's that. We got some good stuff about meetings. I'm going to share it and then like, to get off the damn meetings because we're going to be there yes, forever. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, Ian says, sometimes I feel the same about meetings. And sometimes people create meetings to have meetings and you wonder what value is being added. But there are examples of where meetings added to my knowledge of the why and gives me a better perspective. And they're always an opportunity to add value when you're looked at as a leader in your organization. Fair. Like n- no disagreement here. Mm-hmm. Maria says, but also my preference is hearing it firsthand. In person is so much better. I'm I'm not mocking you, Maria. I'm mocking me. Um, Thomas says remote meetings are less than bulletin board, right? Like just have something where people can go and get the damn thing. Visual communication, visual management, those type of things. Yep. Sometimes you can do that and have it there and not have to have everyone pull them away from the work to be able to be in a room to communicate something that you can visually communicate on a wall or on a a board and stuff. Absolutely. Yes. And Nate says, don't have big group meetings on micro topics. Like that's a hashtag. Hashtag. um, (laughs) Time back, shorten the meeting so the small groups can use the time with more focus. So folks, head on over to the chat because it looks like we've got a whole bunch of amazing cheat codes around meetings. Look, Tanya's like, follow up meetings. I got got anxiety about these words already. Like, yeah. (laughs) And so here's another one, LinkedIn. I think it's Tanya again. She says, or maybe it's not. Anyways, prioritizing is actually one of the underrated skills. And so this brings us back to the point, right? I think it's very easy to get super critical about meetings and the value and your role. and uh, Like, yes, but it's just one small slice of our work that pulls us away from those important things. So I ask you this, Jen. How many personal, like, let's say lunch, let's say breakfast, meals, exercise, a, a, a just a, like, relationship maintaining engagement, have you deprioritized because of a last minute meeting that hit your calendar? A lot. We'll just go with that. But it not, and it's not even the meetings. It's also the travel that goes along with it. Sometimes I don't think we take into account who we, when we ask people to be a part of something or something we commit to the travel that, that isn't, that goes along with that meeting, whether I have to fly or I have to drive and things like that. So a lot, that's all I'm going to say. And, and people that are around me that care about me, you know, Jennifer, have you had lunch? Jennifer, I, I mean, like those are questions I get and it's not because I I don't, I'm trying not to eat. It's that it just, it's not a priority, which is is stupid, but that it is what it is. I, I will own that. Um, but it, I, we talk specifically, I have a story in the lean and love book Ooh. on 
not making things a priority and it and it came back and bit me. I mean, like it is a story specifically I talk about in there on, you, you know, like when we talk about self-care, our mind goes to, you know, doctor visits and dentists and maybe a therapist, things like that. Like those are things that we go through, but like self-care is also how are we balancing work and, you know, other in, in home and how are we doing those things? And so self-care cannot just be, oh, but I'm checking the medical boxes and I'm checking the, you know, the things that, that help me physically stay, you know, healthy so I can do my job, but also mentally also rest. Those are all things that we deprioritize. Um, and like, those are not things we talk about. And the specific example in the book is I had a daughter played volleyball and it was her last game of the season. And so being the mom I am, I'm like, I'm going to coordinate all my travel to make sure that I can hit the meeting. Then I can get to the airport. Then I can get back home. And I got like a couple hours that I can, you know, still get travel and be at the game. So we're good. A four hour delay on a flight. And I land after the game's done. And again, like at that point she was 13, like, you know, they can understand as much as they can understand. But, but like I set myself up for that, even though I had no control over the airlines and all that stuff. Like I set myself up for that because I, there's nothing I could do. And so that, and I talk about it in the book, helped me realize like, Jennifer, you can't schedule things hoping everything goes right perfectly. You've got to make sure if it's a priority, then we either don't travel or we get home the day before or things like that. Like, and it made me have to stop and think about things differently. And it wasn't just prioritizing things for me, but for my family to make sure that she knew that she was important. Yes. Yeah. Look, Carol says, so don't forget to make a life while you are making a living. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Yes. Yeah. Like, absolutely. And that's, that's a thing. Like we get confused about it. And, and here's an important thing. Kind of it, it, the, the idea was in the meeting conversation and, and you're talking about travel. Like it's so easy and comfortable for me to say, they are not even considering. They aren't even considering all the things I have to do. There's a, tr that's a truth. It is absolutely. Well, who's responsible for me? Like, can I get mad at them because they're not letting me go to the dentist when no. I'm making a priority to be in the meeting and reschedule the dentist? Like, exactly. <laughs> I found the enemy and the enemy is me. Right. Like that's the challenge. That's that's the thing. And so the Jim had shared in your conversation about the conditioning that we have to deprioritize stuff. Nobody is making us do that. Mm -hmm. Nobody. We, we get the request. We do some real quick calculus and some negotiating and do, 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 do. yeah, I'll be there. And next call. Hey babe, I ain't going to make it. Or, Hey, can you call it doc? like, Hey doc, like I got to reschedule. I got to cancel because X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. um, and the truth is, and so here's like the game changer. When I started taking ownership for me making those decisions, mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I started having time. I mean, Jen, I went from when I started working with my therapist, who's amazing, by the way, um, and she's got some like virtual workshops that, we, that are available. They do like every other week. Anyhow, when I started working with her, the idea of me taking vacation was a radical, crazy, irresponsible idea. And, and I've said this before on, on one of our conversations. She asked me like straight up, she's like, okay, Jess, what's going to happen if you were off for this period of time? And I'm like, I don't know, what do you mean? And then she's like, Jesse, do you really think the company is gonna shut down if you're gone? And you know, like the answer in my, like for real, for real was, yeah, kind of. <laughs> the truth was false. Right. When I was in rehab, I was in inpatient rehab for 30 days. Amazing, amazing, enriching experience that I had for 30 days. That's a lot. Like, that's not vacation. 
that's third, that's a month. And I really was like so concerned about how the things that I was responsible for, all the projects that I launched and stuff were going to fall off track. You know what happened? <laughs> Everybody just kept on moving. And, and like, when I say like, I was yeah. not there, I was no phone, no internet, no nothing. So like, I didn't touch it for over a month and things kept clicking along. And I'm like, wait a minute, what, what about me? And so my point in sharing that is for me. And if, if you agree out there in the omniverse, leave a, leave a star or leave hashtag Darius in the comment. For me, my biggest problem is my ego. Because I really, and maybe not, it's not so overt, but in my head, they need me. They right? They need me. It's not going to be as awesome and amazing because I'm not there. Like I have to be there. I say all of these things like, like this is my own um, abusive conditioning that lends itself to me deprioritizing all the stuff, right? And so deprioritizing my personal engagements with people, being connected to other human beings, having lunch, like all of that stuff, the, the, it leaves this, this abyss within me that I need to fill. Yes. And what did I feel it, fill it with substance abuse. Right. And that's not so, so there I am getting closer and closer to the damn line and boom, you're going to rehab. And so that's the point, right? Is I am responsible for that. Like the meetings that I'm pissy about, or maybe don't like, that's probably better language. Um, it's my responsibility to have the conversation about it. And sometimes, I mean, there's been times where like, Jess, you need to be in the meeting, 10-4. <laughs> and there's been other times where it's like, yeah, you're right. You don't like, we don't need to be here. This could be something else. But you have to have those conversations in order to, to work that thing out. And it's the prioritization is what we're talking about. Yes. So LinkedIn user says, okay, prioritizing is actually one of the underrated skills Clients are actually looking for advisors around these skills. Well, I happen to know a consultant that, you know, does that sort of stuff. Uh, and, and so I used the, the idea or the word important, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because you familiar with the Eisenhower matrix, Jen? Yes. Right. The urgent and important. Mm -hmm. That's like the top left quadrant. Mm -hmm. The urgent and important things is what robs us of our time. Yes. The important, not urgent. So for me, like the, the core skill I'm working to build is to stay over here in the top right core mm -hmm. quadrant of important, not urgent. Mm -hmm. And super simple because there's, there's a lot of stuff I could put in there. Journaling is important for my mental health. Mm -hmm. It's not urgent because if I skip it, I'm still going to be a little nutty. No big deal. Exercise is important, not urgent. I could mm -hmm. skip it and like, so what? Right. I got my I got my stretchy pants. No big deal. And exercise is important. It's not urgent. Like those are like so fundamental mm -hmm. to my health and well-being in the world that I have historically deprioritized. And here's the thing about the important and urgent stuff is at some point they will become urgent and important. Mm -hmm. And these three things, when they become urgent, it's because my ass is at the doctor's, like I am falling apart. Yep. And now I need an intervention in terms of medication and lifestyle change and all this other stuff because I neglected the important things, like the most important things. And then, you know, family and relationships is in there also. Um, you know, so, just that stuff. You know, just one of those, the, the little stuff. Um, so what do you think about that, Jen? What when well, we... I, I, yes, I 100% agree. And um, I think Bruce touched on this. And so it's just, he talks about that sometimes it's not us deprioritizing it that we are forced to. And so I, I want to own that not, it's not always in our control. There's times because of our, the industry we work in, and because of traditional mindsets, command and control, like the, the, and we're not, we're not saying it's a utopia, like it isn't. 
We know that there, there are things historically in construction that have created this environment. We also know there are a lot more conversations now that are talking about how do we help it? How do we change it? How do we do better? And so I, I want to own, we, it's not just us. Like we just, you know, I'm, I'm not making something important. And so that's why I'm failing at it. Like a lot of times there may, you know, there may be conversations where we're just in an environment that, that who we have to talk to or who is asking us or requiring us to be somewhere is not where we are right now in this conversation. And that's, that's a whole nother, you know, another area. But I know based on the conversations I've had that most of the people that um, I'm not saying complain because it's not a complaint that that are concerned about this will own that some of that is that conditioning. Some of that is this is just in their mind. They're making assumptions. They're they're they don't want they want to make sure they're still adding value, those type of things. And so it, it's a balance and we can't just say it's a perfect scenario where it's just all on us. It's not. It's a balance. And we've got to make sure we are communicating things to other people. Hey, this is important. I need to do this. Hopefully we are getting to a place to where people can understand that, respect that, value that and know that if we are broken and Jesse, you hit on this, if we are broken and we are pushing ourselves to the brink and I see tons of comments over there on just 18 hour days and this many days a week and all that. And, and before it was, if you're not there dark early and you're not there till the sun goes down, then you're not, then you're not, you know, you're not doing your job. And like that, that's the mindset. That's what, you know, that was what was ingrained in those kids, you know, coming out of college and that's what they learned. And now it's like, how do we work smarter, you know, and not harder? How do we do things better to where we're being, we're being smart about it and we're going to be able to last longer and we're going to be able to show up with a sharp mind. We're going to be able to show up and have, you know, good conversations and, and be able to ask the questions that will help us continue to get better instead of just showing up, putting our head down, you know, doing the manual labor and then in then leaving and going back home because there are so many bodies out there right now that are just broken and worn down because that is how they've shown up. Yes. For patched together with duct tape and sticks. Right. So you talked about the young folks laying foundations. Yes. They say good morning and heads up, y'all. We're going to be recording a conversation around mental health with Adam Hoots and Davis and Walker nice. and recording Monday. Uh, so that'll be coming out in the future because they decided to have a regular ongoing conversation around mental health. Um, now, the this this idea around what is going on in the industry maybe not in the industry like bruce started it right he said mm -hmm. i disagree there are things outside of us that influence us to make to, to deprioritize our health and wellness yes and so here's the deal but i bet i'm gonna bet 90 of the folks that, that are on with us right now out there in the omniverse the no bs tribe have direct reports i'm gonna guess that the majority of us have some influence in relationships higher up on that organizational chart than most people do or than we did when we started in our career 100 percent, because we have ballers in our tribe that's right <laughs> and so as i'm as a human being right as a um, little delicate creature that i am I, it's easy for me to think about how the system, them, they have make me deep, make me feel bad about, you know, going to whatever, getting my hair done. Cause I need to, I need to get my highlights touched up. Um, but how purposeful and committed and disciplined am I with my direct reports Am I displaying the behavior that I seek? Like how awesome I'm pissy about my boss because the boss I got now, man, he's a jerk. Like he, he don't back off at he's all. He's a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> and he's slacking all the time. Um, like how awesome would it be for my boss to sit down in my performance review and say, hey, you haven't been taking your vacation. And, and, I've had that happen multiple times. Bob would tell me that. And then it kind of stays there. And then the next year I get dinged again for not taking vacation because you got to recharge. You're going to burn out. End of conversation. Clearly, I don't know how to do it. 
I need more help. So what if that awesome boss said, okay, we talked about this. It, I need in the next 90 days, mm -hmm. I need you to schedule time off. Mm -hmm. And in 45 days, we're going to check in. And if you haven't scheduled that time off, I'm going to schedule your damn time off mm -hmm. because some of us need that. And so the point is, yes, there are external pressures. And how are we feeling the pressure, complaining about the pressure, and also turning around and distributing that pressure to the rest of our people? What do you think about that? <laughs> well, yes, and that was great. Good job, Adam, in the background. He's just bringing these things up that hit exactly what you're talking about. So, I mean, and then the celebration of working our butts off, like the celebration that happens when people are just working so hard. And so I, I great segue, but I have an example of how empowering it is for you to be in a meeting, whether you're with your person you report to or the per, or your direct report. So in my annual performance review meeting that happened, you know, in the last couple months, you and I talked about this is um, I'm sitting in there and we're going through all my goals, my initiatives, the things that in my role I support for, for my company. And we get done and I'm like, okay, what do I need to work on? What are some, you know, what are those things that I can get better at? And the number one thing that he said is, Jennifer, you've got to learn how to make sure that you are taking care of you. So what are those specific things that you need to do so that you can continue to function and support what we're doing inside this company? Mm -hmm. and, and that, and, and, but you just said like those people that we are the direct, we are the people that lead them. We are the people that can have those conversations with them. I'm going to tell you for me and my role in this, in, in my company, which is big to have the person I report to make that be something that's, that he's thinking about. It allows me to go, Jennifer, come on now. Like you can take the time for this. You can take the time for that and still do your job that it had to start with him because I'm just going to keep going because that's what I do. And the celebration, I think, um, I don't know, it was Bradley, maybe it was Bradley, uh, that it, you're celebrated a lot of times by just working your butt off. And for someone to have that conversation with you, you know, I have a direct report and, and you and I've had that conversation where like a lot, having that real conversation with her on, hey, you know, make sure you're prioritizing some things that are important to you and have the, you know, let's, let's have some open communication about that. Like it has to start with that conversation. Yes. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the comments of like some people being Good. vulnerable and courageous around what they have deprioritized. Yes. This real stuff. Adam says, and we know this, Adam, I've deprioritized my health on numerous occasions in the past. And for clarity, what he means in the past is like yesterday and beyond. <laughs> um, I am getting better because of you two. So he's credit. Jen and I are, are like, we have a support network. So maybe that's another thing to think about. What is your support network that helps you build this skill of prioritizing your wellness over the work, right? Over that instant hit. That need, I need a hit. I need to go to that meeting. Um, Tim straight up says, I deprioritize my third wedding anniversary to attend an out-of-state conference. My wife was super supportive of me doing it. So, but it still is something I think about. Don't worry, y'all. We made it to number four. <laughs> Congratulate. And they just had a, they got some young babies, some young little younglings bumping around in the house. But he still thinks about it. Like, like even though he had the support and had someone doing it, it's still something that's in his head. So it's like, those are things that we think of that are continually going to make us, ooh, 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 you know, yes. worry about things. Yes. And then Justin, Justin says, I have the deprioritized family time. I would get home and pull out my tablet to go through drawing schedule, et cetera, while my significant other would be waiting for me to finish to tell me about her day. This almost cost me that relationship, right? Like this is like serious business. Th these are things that we do all the time. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, men, thank you for like putting that out there because it's not a, a thing. And also, for showing up the ladies because it was the guys that put it out there. I'm just messing with you. Um, 
Thomas says got guilty, been promoted, leveled up, awarded, given plaques and jewelry, all while carrying a 250 hour PTO balance, paid time off. Right. Like it's a real thing. Um, and so here's here's a. So it's like the skills and our muscles, the conditioning that we have needs the adjustment. Mm -hmm. Yes, the organization needs to change. And I got to take my responsibility for my part as well. Mm -hmm. So let's start some new behavior in the comments, folks from the Omniverse. Yes. Let us know. Let's celebrate with you the last time you prioritized your wellness over work. And what I mean by wellness Doctor's appointments, dentist appointment, exercise, nutrition, family time, relationships. And I think I get extra credit because because I have so many relationships all over the world. And and does does digital social media relationships count? Do I get extra credit for that? Well, that that if not, then would you have any? <laughs> That was so I have my relationship with TikTok is strong and growing, baby. Um so yeah, y'all, please in the comments, let's celebrate those things. And if you want to get like extra points, let us know when that was, mm -hmm. because I think there's some data there that we can uh, <coughs> learn from in terms of, was it last week? Was it last month? Was it January? Right? Because that is a truth. Uh, and it's, it's easy for me, I know, to like anchor on... That one big thing I did, even though it was 10 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so like my monthly, I have since April, since I went independent and started my business, I have faithfully taken at least a three days off every single month. Um, the last one was we went to Oklahoma uh, and we had the... Uh, reciprocal propulsion retreat, which was, which was kind of cheating a little bit because I was at risk of like being um, depleted at the end yes. of the experience, but it was not a depleting, <laughs> it was totally fulfilling, relaxing, connecting uh, experience. So it counts. And, and so that's like the most, re or, I mean, the other one is I journaled yesterday. Right. For an hour and I came up with some like the, the all the, the details and design around my next empire that I'm building, that I'm going to build. Um, so that's my celebration. Jen, what is your celebration? My celebration was yesterday. So um, I don't know how many people have to deal with the Atlanta airport, but I don't, I'm not in that airport very often. But the cool thing about that airport is when you go through uh, your, you know, you go through security. You have the option of getting on the train that goes from, you know, A, B, C, D, E, all the gates. You can get on the train and take it to the gate or they have this big old long tunnel that you can walk to each of them before you go up. So it's just a, a, it's just a straight shot. The train's going beside you, but you can just keep walking. And I walked from the, there all the way to my gate which, you know, walking and just exercise for me is I struggle fitting that into my life. And so it was awesome. And I, it, it just, it was a good, you know, extra 15, 20 minutes to get to where I needed to go. But when I got done, it's like, ah, oh, it was so much better than just jumping on a train, jumping off and going sitting at my gate. So, yes. And I love that example, Jen, because this shift, right? We, it, it doesn't have to be monumental. Like Carol's talking about a monumental shift here. She wanted to share a big change at her work environment. They're having a retreat for the entire department centering on mindfulness practices. And, like, and how did that happen? So I, my guess is because of Carol. Um, yes. And that's a big deal. That's huge. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't have to be that huge. And I think that's also part of the challenge to building these habits that keep us away from the flame mm -hmm. is because we're thinking of a vacation, a two big. week trip, big, giant, enormous thing. And the example that you gave that was also an excellent deflection was I was at the airport and I went, I decided to go for a walk and get my blood flowing for 15 or 20 minutes. 
where normally you would have been checking your emails or absolutely looking at, like looking at your calendar. Da, 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 da. And so that is an active decision to to shift the behavior towards honoring yourself. And it was a small like 50 <laughs> 20 minutes. And and it's not easy. Right. It, it's not a subconscious decision. A subconscious decision for me is, well, shit, let me go back and clean out my inbox, like delete all that garbage. That, that's not relevant or. No, 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 no. I promise I was supposed to get 10,000 steps today. Let me go get those steps in. Um, but, but there was planning in that because if I had gotten to the airport like I normally do at home is I plan it to where like I get to the airport, I go through security, I get to the gate and there's about, you know, 10 or 15 minutes for me to get ready to go. Like that's my normal. But because I was traveling and driving and stuff like that, I got to the airport a couple of hours early. And so the planning part of that too is planning that into, you know, into my, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to prioritize something? I had to think about that prior to just, okay, I can do this and I can maximize this and I can get to the airport. Like it, I, I had to just go, you know what, I'm just going to get there early. And then that allowed me time to do that. And not packing in extra stuff, right? Yes. Some of us are packer inners. Um, so Bradley, thank you, my man, for sharing. He says he quit a job. This is celebration because he was having many strokes from the stress of a two hour commute on night shift, working six to 14 hours in January, right? Like that, again, if you don't make time for the important, it will become urgent <laughs> and celebrate Bradley. Right? Great. I mean, like, thank you for owning that and being able to do that. Cause we're glad you're here. Yes. hundred percent. Uh, DJ hootie hoots. Who's, uh, Jen, I don't know if you've been, if you've received the subpoena yet, but I got a subpoena uh, but from Hoots Enterprises um, wanting to be officially listed as an author of Lean and Love. And we're going to learn more about that in the Lean and Love um, <laughs> blooper reel. So y'all keep an eye out for the blooper reel. Uh, he says, I am currently in hibernation mode, preparing for an insane first week of March. Hashtag preparation. So He's preemptively saying, okay, March is going to be nuts because I'm going to be in Dallas being super awesome at the uh, Hanson Wade conference and then doing the TAC training for the LCI COP. Which is already sold out. So Sold out. Right? And then he's got other stuff going on. And so he's preemptively, like pre-gaming, right? I mean, I know. Back That's pre -gaming awesome. else, <laughs> he's coming he, up. Yeah. <laughs> To get out there and get ready to take on this load that you and I know this and folks, uh, folks that are like public speakers, facilitators, you know how much energy it takes to to do that sort of thing. I mean, Jen, she's all glamorous and she's the famous lady, but it does have an impact on her, uh, on her energy. And so, Amy, I want to celebrate Amy because she's, again, the courage and oh, you know what? She's actually balancing it out in terms of the gender war around being vulnerable. Good job, Amy. Thank you. Uh, Tom, she says, Thomas, I've been out sick Thursday and Friday, out sick as in went to the ER. Lance asked me if my job was going to be okay with me being out of pocket. I was like, yes, I have maxed out my PTO and have the time. And Katya Bialta is on site. I'm covered. We're good. That was a moment for me. And I know I have more work to do around this subject. Thank you, Amy, for sharing that. Yeah, yeah. And so she had, what my takeaway from that is like, she had some comfort in not, like there's somebody there that can cover it, right? So again, so back to my personal responsibility, part of the reason I believe the world's going to fall apart if I'm not there is because all my processes in the way of executing the task or responsibility were in my head. And so I couldn't hand it over to somebody because I didn't understand my process. And I rationalized by saying, well, it's just faster if I do it. All right. And so I want to keep poking at that yes. because folks, we have tremendous influence over ourselves, but it's so comfortable to say they, to say them, the mm -hmm. industry. Yes. The industry, but what the hell, what about me? What, what am I doing to make this thing nasty and unhealthy for me? So James Gable says, now that's turning the tables, hashtag pre-gaming, 
by resting and charging batteries game changer hashtag game changer um y'all need to keep an eye on james and uh, the uncommon communicator podcast because there's big things in the future uh that he's going to be contributing to make he continue making our industry better um all right so so another here's another cheat code greg crumpton says building in slack time in your calendar so jen oh thank you greg for reminding me that i wanted to hit jen with this one um, you and i uh, we were talking about your schedule and the pressure and stuff that you had been dealing with um when you went there was one one conversation we had where i'm like okay like i know you're traveling but on your calendar, are you accounting for travel time? Do you remember that? I do. And I was not because in my mind, it's like I got my flight information on there just so I can have it in my calendar. At no point was I accounting for the travel time to get there, the travel time during while I was in the air, the travel time to get my rental car, to get to my hotel, to get like I was accounting for none of that. And what I found was happening is I was sitting in the airport parking garage on a phone call in a meeting. I was having to get off and on my, in my earbuds on the way to the rental car place. Like I was getting pulled into things because I did not allow for that. And again, it was, it was me and my fault, not putting that stuff on my calendar because I didn't think about it because I'm available. I'm not in the air. Like literally just that, that's how my brain worked. And so Rachel, who, you know, helps handle my life. And so she, we had this conversation and I said, Rachel, I was like, I'm struggling because I'm trying to like get checked in and all this stuff. So she's now gone in and blocked like two hours prior, two hours after, and make sure that they are just not available. And it has, it has changed so much on just my anxiety and the stress of like, okay, get on, not get on. Ah, oh, it's a delay. And so I got to let them know I'm not going to be on. Like, it just has allowed me to, to again, kind of have a little bit of relief to not feel like I'm not doing something that I should be doing. Yes. And so, and here's the thing. And, and Adam and I've had this same conversation is it feels selfish because yeah, I could take the call. I really could take the call. But here's what we need to consider, and, and this is how I reconcile it in Jesse land, is, yes, I can take the call, but how much of me am I going to be giving on that call while I'm driving in a new city to the damn uh, yes. rental car place where, like, I, I've never been, uh, 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 hold on, hold on, uh, 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 sorry, uh, I might come in and out because I'm driving. <laughs> I'm not adding, like, that is not, yes. that is poor, poor performance. But it was like, I got to be there. Mm -hmm. But am I really freaking there? Yes. All right. And 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 then we allow things to just like erode around the edges of our wellness mm -hmm. because of the stress and the pressure. Like a little bit. It's not major stress, major pressure, but it's constant stress and constant pressure that just eats away and eats away and eats away. And we can do something about it. So. Mm -hmm. Miss Yvonne, my sister from the Facebook, she says, growing pains, lessons in life. Yes, ma'am, 100%. I've uh, got another celebration from Justin. He says, I left work early just to connect with a friend that I haven't talked to in a while. This isn't a physical health thing, but it filled me emotionally, absolutely, because I missed having this person in my life. And so, Justin, thank you for making that precise yes. comment, because this isn't just a conversation about physical health. This is about like the human health, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I didn't take care of myself, I would not be here for y'all. You would not be enjoying all this massive awesomeness that we bring to you every other Saturday. And so it's all connected. And thank you. Carol says mental health is a misnomer. It is emotional health. When emotions are skewed, exaggerated and or not processed, they affect our biology. It is not a cognitive issue. Like, it's not in our head. It is always an effective issue, affective issue. And she's apologizing. No apology necessary, Carol. That is just gangsta. That's what that is. Thank so, you. So I have a question that I think it, it's important. 
And you, you hit on this earlier in the live stream on that you kind of take two or three days a, uh, a month to kind of help you recharge, help you kind of get, you know, reset. Like, what are you doing to re recharge? Because for you, it's usually you by yourself, but you were in an environment to where it fed you and it kind of helped you yeah. get and it, whatever. So like that, that is, that's a big deal. Not just, I'm going to take the time and go to a doctor's appointment. I'm going to take the time and go and be at my child's basketball game. Shout out to Nick Dill, who made sure that was something he mentioned yesterday that he got to get back to watch a tournament for his son. But, you know, what are you doing to recharge and reset so that you can bring your 100% self to your yes. work and to your family? Yes, that is, you know, maybe that's a homework assignment for folks or maybe a topic for discussion on the emotional bungee jumper mm -hmm. call on Friday. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to say this. Like, yes, I'm at a state now where an hour every day I'm journaling. Now I'm exercising an hour every day and I'm eating nutritiously. Most of the time. And then we're working on that one. Um, taking three days, at least three days a, a month, a week, three days each month off. Mm -hmm. And I it took reps for like micro, like, yes, that's an enormous amount of time now. I started with just like five minutes and 10 minutes here and a day, a month, a day, a year. And, and I was able to discover what it is that recharges me the most. And so right now it's changed my environment entirely and solitude. Like if I got those two ingredients, amazing. Uh, and so I'm sharing this with you all so that you give yourself permission to experiment and figure it out. Some people's journaling, some people's walking, some people's painting, some people it's actually spending time with family. Like there's all kinds of different things, right? So that's that. Yes, that is my one. Oh. Okay, there we go. When I can turn my computer off on Friday and then not open it up until Monday morning, I am winning because my weekends, I mean, I travel, I do a lot of work and because I'm remote and I can, I do a lot of my work from home. It's so easy to pull it out, to open it up, to address things work-wise. And then that's ready. I'm ready to go Monday morning. But if I can not open my computer on the weekend outside of this, outside of the live stream, if I can do that, then I'm winning. And, it, and I know that's not my work week. Like my work week is Monday through Friday. You know, that's what, that's what, it, that's what my time card says. But it, but I know that I'm winning if I can just disconnect and focus on my on my family. Yeah. Pete says you have to step back, folks. Y'all need to go to the learning and missteps page on the LinkedIn because I did my modeling day. There's a video of me, my first official modeling debut on there, and it's in support of Pete and Zepp's gear. Uh, Marcus, we saw more. Having some good to see. Yes. You. Welcome, Marcus. You did make it. And then shout out to I'm thinking this is Tanya. She's celebrating. So today, like her being on this live stream by tuning in to the live stream this morning after five weeks, because she has been kind of MIA. And so with that, we're going to further the celebration this week sometime. We are going to have a no BS meetup here in the San Antonio Deuce Dime, baby. I'll get the details out here <laughs> soon. Um, barely taking time to breathe, eat, sleep, etc. for work. So congratulations. Yes. Uh, we got. We've got the no BS after party that's already set up. I'm going to go while I go and drop it in the comments, Jen, would you mind sharing a closing thought for us? Yes, 100 percent. So today we talk about um, I think what, what I the theme that I've seen through here is the value that we add and that value that we add and why we need to be in a meeting or the value that we add and why we have to sometimes deprioritize other things because we were bringing the value. We are the value. And it's not, I'm not going to go as far as to say it's an ego thing like you. It's, I think in our mind, we want to add value. We want to be able to contribute because then that is where other people see the value that we add. Please stop and think about that. Our value is not just what we are bringing to the meeting or to the engagement. Our value is also how are we mentoring and how are we bringing other people in and being able to delegate or share that so that we can have that time to be able to go do other things. And I know Amy touched on it and some other people is how are we being able to 
to, to prioritize things because other people can step in and other people, ha- you know, have the ability to, um, you know, to, to allow us that time. And so it goes both ways. We want to be valuable, but we also have to really focus on who are we mentoring and who are we really engaging and talking to, to go, Hey, let's build them up. Let's help, help them develop their leadership skills and things like that. Focus on who are we mentoring and who are Yes. So another thing I want to challenge us about is how can we become our, right? Like we need to advocate for our, ourselves. Yes. Did I freeze up? Yeah. You're, yeah. You're, I think you're back. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to do too many things over here. Um, <laughs> of course. So yes. I we can advocate for ourselves. <laughs> Amazing closing thought folks. Thank you for tuning in and, and join us on the LinkedIn after party. I just posted the link on the link on the thing, and I'm going to post a few more for uh, YouTube and Facebook so that we can hear your voice and hear your ideas and thoughts about this morning's conversation. Good. Yes. Yes. No BS awesome. with Jen and Jess page is where you posted it. I'm guessing. Right. Yes. I don't know. I posted it somewhere. Yes. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all in five minutes. Bye. Peace. <laughs>